Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to Reaper Pro, Pro, Pro Tips. Yeah, you can tell it's short sleep and puppy time. So the problem is, yeah, the problem is, guys, that um, we were exhausted yesterday and I did, did not have time to mess with the Powered Hub and the Puppy Cam and my computer this morning is not reading the Powered, uh, the powered USB Hub. Um, so um, she's actually, she settled down. I'm going to try to detach this cam, guys, or just swing it over there and see if you can see her. Hold on. Let me see if I can move my arm. Do, 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 do. You can see a David. Popper. She's very sausage-like right now. Yeah, she is. There we go. So, yeah. Hold on. Let me get her. Ah! Oops. I should have just slid that out. I didn't realize it was mounted that way. That easy, easily. Or I would have just moved it instead of repositioning my arm. All right, let me reposition me, guys. This is a morning full of technical errors, essentially. Oh, no, no, yeah, that. That way. It's got to be just about. Oh, that's good. Except that I need to be over a little bit. Oh, I can turn it. All right, kind of. Mostly. Sort of. <laughs> Um, her name, her name, we are not um, doing Cerberus. She is not a Cerberus. She is, uh, she was... She's a little Cerberus. Well, but she's not as Cerberus as some other puppies. Um, <laughs> no. So her name from the breeder was Keyleth, after the character on Critical Role, and her, her, uh, her nickname is Kiki. So she responds to Kiki, and so we're probably going to keep Kiki. Because, and now she's conked because it's it's nap time. And that's actually great because then she'll be quiet on stream. Yeah. I was going to actually have her up in my arms for the start, but um, yeah, that didn't work out. So thank you, David, for your sure. round of applause for David for his puppy handling skills. If she had not calmed down, he would have had to watch it while I streamed. <laughs> so hold on. Yeah, we're close enough for dinner. Do you have a phone handy? Um, I do if I so need to call can, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to adjust this real quick and then we'll get to the actual stream here. There we go. That's much better. Much better. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're almost there. I'm so persnickety about edges here. That's better. All right. Yay! Hey, Neural. Thanks for the resub. 34 months. Awesome. Everybody says yay, David. <laughs> oh, David? Yeah. Could you actually get this small fan from the bedroom? Oh, and sure. I'm going to have it blow on her down here. So this puppy loves fans, like she loves moving air, and she grew up with air conditioning, and we do not have AC, and it's going to be warm in here. So I'm just having David fetch the fan. So, all right. So yes, we got Keyleth, Kiki, uh, yellow collar girl. We'll probably keep Kiki, because she knows her name already. Um, and she is a Kiki. She's kind of a ditz, <laughs> at least at this age. She's blonde and a ditz, guys. Um, so that's what we're at. Um, yeah, she needs to learn to snooze while I paint, actually. She needs to learn to, and the nice thing is that, like, she's used to people just being around and talking, so the fact that I talk during this stream is going to be great, because she's just going to, you can put it back a little bit. I don't want it too strong on her. Can you, can you put it, move it back away from her? Yeah. Should I turn it down? Uh, turn it oh, to it's one. It's out. already at one, yeah. Okay. You, you good on that, Keeks? Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, I think she'll be okay. Should I move it further back? If you can. Yeah, there you go. No, you're this fine. Like yeah, you that's good. Out. That's good. I just don't like it to be we like right in her cord. face. Like some of the cord is wrapped up. That yeah, but then it's then we have to worry about all that's that true. cord. Okay, cool. Okay. Puppy wrangling 101, guys. Now you can close the door. Um, <laughs> happy International Tiny Dog Day. Um, so yeah, she's a cutie and she's already conked out because it is her nap time. Um, so we're hoping that this is good. And uh, I will call David. If she wakes up, I'm probably going to have to get up and just take her out since she's a baby eight weeks puppy. So when she wakes up, she needs to pee. Um, so we're going to be doing that. But yeah, the puppy enclosure is set. And actually, it should hold her for a while. And I have extra panels to make it bigger. So yeah. Whew. Yeah, Bryce, I waved at you from Reno, but I was so exhausted. And she had had a day of car sickness before we hit Reno. So I was just like, <laughs> So I was just like, no, no, I'm not going to text Bryce. <laughs> I had just enough energy to stuff her into the crate again to go and get a poke bowl because I desperately needed something that wasn't road food. And that was my time in Reno. But Bryce, Reno is really beautiful. Like, I can see why you like it. I was on the west side. Yeah, yep. So Pupper is here, but she's sleeping, and we're going to let her sleep. Yeah, and I'll try to figure out why the, why the powered hub isn't working for my cameras. That's kind of a bummer. 
Um, so, yeah, you have to come into the... Yeah, Reno's beautiful. Like, I was on the west side, so I was staring right at the big green mountain that goes into California. Um, and uh, it was really beautiful. It was a bigger city than I expected. Um, so now everybody knows where Bryce lives. <laughs> Sorry, Bryce. <right? laughs> but, yeah, so... So yeah, so I did the puppy evaluation on Saturday, and um, Kiki was not the one I originally was uh, wanting, but the, her temperament was the best for David and me. Um, uh, Vex, who was the one I really liked the structure on, Vex is a Cerberus. She was a fireball. Like, she would have been way too much dog for David, and she probably wouldn't have been that much fun for me either. Because uh, I've, I've already raised a dog like that, and although I can handle it, it's a lot of work. Um, so Vex, is, Vex was not. No, nah, that was Pink Color Girl, the duel. And then Pikey, Pike, the black girl, um, she really was, like, her structure was very poodly. And she also had a temperament that was more like Kiri's, where she would have taken a lot of confidence building. And I already did that with Kiri, so I was like, all right, that wasn't great. So, oh, I've been, I've been like doing this. Um, I actually got certified under our breed founder for this sort of evaluation, Bryce. So I've been doing these evaluations on puppies. I think I've done over 30. Um, been doing it for uh, over a decade now. So yeah. Bye, bye, Corsair. Come back. Um, yeah, she's asleep right now, yeah, Lady Nim. Actually, now that I know that my my webcam will just slide out of this, let me see if I can get it to slide out. Well, it was sliding out a moment ago. Now it's being dumb. Come on, webcam. Oh, there we go. Okay, so hold on. Oh, 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 oh. There's the pupper. There's the pupper. Sleeping. Sleeping pupper. So she's just like lying down there. Bryce, I like to joke that I have three worlds. Let me slide this back in here and move it up a little bit. But yeah, I like to joke that I have three worlds. Um, one for painting, and one for writing, and one for dogs. And in all of my worlds, it's very rare for people to cross over. Um, like, it's really rare that I have somebody who knows me in two out of three worlds. <laughs> yep, so there she is. Oh, she, she put on weight. Like, they were like 13 pounds, like at six and a half weeks, I think. When, she, when we left on Monday, 18.8 .8 pounds. For a girl, that's really nice weight. So, but she's tiny. She's tiny compared to what she will become. Um, but yeah, so she, this is her nap time and she's gonna be perfectly happy because I'm gonna sit here and talk. But yeah, so that's our baby. That's our Kiki. Um, and uh, so yeah, her temperament was just, um, she's very sociable. She loves people. Um, she is, uh, she's got a fair number, a fair amount of energy, but not as much as Vex did. And, uh, she, yeah, she loves to chase moving objects, so it's good we don't have a cat. Um, but uh, she loves squeaky toys. Uh, she loves to chew on her toys. She, now that she is settling in, she's a lot calmer. Um, so she was just, this morning, she was just settling on my feet in the kitchen, chewing um, her, her trachea that she had, her, her dried trachea toy treat. Um, I have one, one big one. You can see it right over there. Um, just from uh that was i think that was like maybe the first day and it's her claws actually she doesn't she likes to like kind of mouth you but she's very gentle we've been discouraging it obviously because we we're going to be headed for the teething period soon enough and then it's really sharp mode um so she's getting pretty good at just kissing at giving kisses and not nibbles um but we are looking for a puppy class for her so she can still play with other puppies so yeah that's that's the total update the pup date that's the pup date for today. We have a real live pup date. Um, and I may need to stretch. Oh, dog father, 30 months. Thank you. Yeah, she's a cutie. She's a cutie. So, yeah, shark mode. Shark mode is when they enter teething mode and their mouths just hurt so much that they're trying to put pressure on them all the time because it eases it. So, so yeah, I know. I know. I've raised enough puppies at this point. So, yeah, but she's just a baby. Eight and a half weeks right now. And already pretty, yeah, I mean, if you... If you looked at her in this pen, it's two feet wide. So if she was stretched out, if she would almost like fill it like nose, nose to butt, she would almost be two feet long, which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So yeah, so we don't know how big these puppies are gonna get because they have the outcross blood behind them, right? Which is poodle and Dutch water dog. 
Um, and those dogs are smaller than Shiloh Shepherds. But she also has a couple of big Shilohs in her pedigree close in. So she could get size genes or maybe not. Not sure. So now, now is the fun part because she's an outcross dog. We don't know. I don't know if her ears are going to stand. I don't know what she's, what her markings are going to look like. I don't know how big she's going to get. Like this is when we get the fun part of watching the puppy develop, right? It's like creating a character and now we get to watch the character level up. <laughs> but yeah, she's being a really good, um, really good girl. Uh, I'm teaching her clicker training. She's very good at sit and she's learning stand. Uh, she's learning settle. She's learning all sorts of stuff. So. And she's learning not to eat David's sneakers or David's David's slippers. David's slippers are fascinating. So yeah, we had lots of experiences on the road. It was harrowing <laughs> at times. Yeah, David's David's uh, slippers are, are an endangered species. I only got a shower 15 minutes before a stream, as you can see. So this is a work in progress. We'll have the weekend to get used to our uh, routine. Hey, Mad Cat, wait, thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid, everybody. We we're just talking about our puppy. My new puppy um, that I just brought home. Actually, we drove into town literally yesterday after a three and a half day road trip across the American West. Um, so yeah, I got to drive through Yellowstone, but that was the car sick day. So I couldn't actually stop and take pictures because I didn't want to stop with a car sick puppy. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I showed the puppy earlier. She's sleeping in her pen, but I need to get to actually painting because that's really what this stream is about. At least that's what I think it is. Lately, it's been all the puppy show. <laughs> hello, hello. But yes, yes, so I have a tiny eight and a half week old, well, she's not tiny, she's actually a monster, but um, a small puppy who is currently sleeping. So yes, warning in advance again, for those of you who just came in, if she wakes up, I'm gonna have to grab her and take her outside right away, so. Puppies are very important. Yeah, yeah, I wonder, wait, I've got pictures. I can, I don't wanna mess with my cam again. I'm trying to get my puppy cam to work, but it wasn't working. So instead, let's see, there's a cute picture from this morning. There's my girl. So there you are. There you are. That's from the kitchen this morning when she was being very good and settled in. Um, so yeah, her name is Keyleth after the critical role player character and she, uh, her short name is Kiki. So yeah, she's a sweetheart. Look at that face. Look at that cute little face. Yeah, she's adorbs. So, oh, and oh, wait, I have video. Let me see here. Let me see if I can get the video. All right. She was chewing her octopus toy. So she was settled. She's got all sorts of stuffed toys. Um, no, Shiloh Shepherd. Um, except it's a. <laughs> she's a good girl. She's an outcross. Um, we aren't an AKC breed, uh, so essentially we can still cross to other breeds and then cross back into Shilohs, essentially to get better genetics and less inbreeding. Um, and so the, that's what we're doing. And she's actually the second generation um, uh, Luleka. She's a, so her grandpappy was a half standard poodle, half Dutch water dog. And there, that was itself a product of an outcross for the, for the Dutch water dog breed, the Wetterhound breed. Um, and they knew our breeders over in the Netherlands. So they gave us the opportunity to use one of those and get kind of the genetics of both breeds. Um, but yeah, so uh, so yeah, so we aren't sure if her ears are gonna stand. She definitely has a little bit of the curl tail, the tail that goes up, kind of like Wetterhound and Poodle. Um, Shilohs are more like the German Shepherd; they've got more of the saber tail. But we'll see how she matures. This is all gonna be a question mark, right? But it's kind of fun. I like outcrosses. I mean, I like the health that it brings. Uh, definitely good genetic health. Um, I really like, uh, we did puppy culture with this litter, or my breeder did, um, dog father. And puppy culture is kind of like how you can raise puppies that are already tuned to clicker. Um, it's, what else was I looking at? That's one. I'll have to, let me, I, I forget. I got like maybe two brain cells to rub together today after getting woken up by, at 6.45 by a puppy. Um, so, and I'm woken up like three times during the night by a puppy. So yeah. Um, but I'll get back to you on that. There are good um, there are good resources for clicker training. The timing is everything. The important part to know is that you have to teach your dog that the click means a treat is coming. And so if they hear the click, then they ideally they reorient to you right away. So then they're like, oh, there's a treat coming, right? And so you have to click right when the puppy does the behavior you want. And then the puppy knows that a tree is coming, so they then they reorient to you. So that's just like the first very simplified thing of clicker training. And if you can get that, honestly, 
you can teach basic obedience like really easily. But yeah, yeah, this is a really good model, uh, Mad Cat. So this is, here, hold on, I've got his, um, this is a Cat Folk Paladin. And there's the number. This is a metal model. I don't know if it is in our Bones USA or our Bones yet, but it's 4051, so it's, um, it's mostly tin, so it's metal, white metal. And uh, yeah, he's almost done. We, uh, we, we kind of built this dungeon stair um, for him on the last stream. So today I want to paint that, and then he'll be done. So one of the cutest, Mad Cat, this is the cutest. It's the ball of yarn on the shield is the cutest. I love it. So, oh yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, so this is sculpted by Julie Guthrie, um, and she's in chat, actually, under green users, Mad Cat. But yeah, she's, um, we'll also be painting, we have kind of a six model rotation, but now that uh, Paladin Cat is almost done, I have uh, a mage cat, so a cat folk mage, that I'm going to be doing next. Yeah, there's green users. So that's that's Julie Guthrie and also Bob Rodolfi probably listening in. Also, two sculptors from Reaper who uh, who grace our stream regularly because we're just lucky that way. So she sculpted both of those. She, Julie does the best animals, pretty much. Well, Andy Peeper's good at animals now, too. But yeah, so those are the two models. Those are the two you can see there in the same series. So yeah, so there you go. All right, so let's get to this. Let's mix up some stonework. Now I have to think about my color on the stone here. Um, I kind of want to make it darker because we went very light with uh, Kitty's metal. But yeah, so Julie sculpted it. I painted it, actually. Um, but we're going to do the base here. Yeah, so cool. So let's... Usually with basing, if I don't have a specific aim, I'm going to go darker um, because I want the cat to really stand out. So I'm going to start with a very dark gray. I think I'm going to start with carbon gray, actually. Um, carbon gray is a very, very, it's a nice charcoal gray. It should go, we used it for some of the shadows on the NMM, so we are actually going to be using a, a color that will go with everything. Yeah. Raid, run, and eat. All right, well, it's nice to meet you, Mad Cat. Thanks for the raid. So yeah, I'm Anne. This is Reaper Stream, Reaper Miniatures Twitch. We we do a lot of different shows, but I'm on every morning. So have a good uh, lunch or dinner or whatever you're doing. Or breakfast. I guess you could be breakfast. <laughs> if you're in Hawaii, it's breakfast time, right? Alrighty. Let's get this charcoal gray mixed up. I'm going to actually do six drops because I know I have a lot of base and I'm probably going to want to build it out a bit. So I'm going to grab two drops of water. Boom. Here we go. Tiny puppy is totally zonked out. Totally zonked. UK dinner. Okay. Have a good dinner then. Oh, no problem. Good. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you again. All right, so this is about a three to one, but um, the uh, carbon gray, one of the reasons I like it is it's got terrific coverage. So it's really, really high coverage, even when thinned. And we will get that on my brush and uh, get the stonework done here. And maybe we'll use a little bit of kind of um almost like a water effects, kind of make a little drip coming down because the base itself is a little con concave here. You can see it. And uh, so we could always make some kind of goopy, some water dripping down between the flagstones here and running off the edge of the base. Um, just a little extra detailing I think would be cool. So then you know Kid A is down under in a wet underground dank dungeon. Uh, I want a bigger brush to paint my basing with. So I'm going to actually grab my Escoda, which is big and fat. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it won't be the last ReaperCon, so your big diorama will get done eventually. Also, I'm slightly allergic to my puppy, so if I have to um, sneeze a lot this stream, that's why. I'll, I'll acclimate to her. I've acclimated to all my dogs. Um, my allergies are actually really slight. Environmental allergies and pet allergies. But I am, I am acclimating to, uh, and she desperately also needs a bath. So, <laughs> so 
So I like to start dark with stonework because it's just much easier to bring the highlights up, I think. You could also start lighter and put this carbon gray wash over everything. But I like to start dark. And I'll probably use some dark greens um, in some of the shading here also. Um, the puppy is Keyleth, Kiki, yellow collar girl. She's the sable girl. I'm, she's asleep right now, and I'm, I'm, I did, didn't get my puppy cam to work, Roger, but, but this is a picture from this morning. There's my pretty girl. So, yeah, so that is her. The funny thing was um, we met a couple of people on, on the trip, right? I, I let her meet a couple of people who seemed nice. Um, and she was a little hesitant on the trip, but the minute we walked in the door and David was there, she went like bazonkers, like she thought he was her long lost, like something or other. Like, I swear, which was funny because like all on the road, she was just like, oh, I guess it's okay to meet the person. Okay, I'm going to go hide by mom now. And then, yeah, she walks in and she's like, David, you must be my new person. It was really funny. So David says she's his dog, by the way. She's al he's already in the process of stealing her from me. I told him that means that I get another one in the future. That's my dog. So I'm gonna just use use this and get the paint. And yeah, you can paint right over green stuff, as you see, it's cured, so. But yeah, so Roger, we went with Kiki because she had the best temperament for both David and I. One of the puppies needed more confidence building. That was the black one, Pike. And then one of the puppy, the puppy that I originally liked, Vex, um, was very much a fireball and would have been just too much dog for David as a new puppy owner. Kiki is really easy, like really. She, this is the kind of out of the box Shiloh Shepherd that like people come to Shiloh Shepherds for. Like she gets wound up, sure. Like if she's stressed, she'll get wound up. But when she's, you know, like even the third day on the road, when she was kind of used to the routine that we'd gotten going, she was just great. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm always looking also, I, I do a lot of reading about canine behavioral science and stuff like that. So I'm always looking at kind of new, new takes on it. Um, and the more you can learn when you're doing puppy uh, evaluations, I and mean, a lot of people think puppy evaluations don't work, um, just because maybe it hasn't worked for them, but you can't argue with the studies that like guide dogs for the blind have done. Cause they, they are the ones who develop this sort of temperament testing and they use it to make sure they have a higher graduation rate on their puppies. So I believe that temperament testing absolutely does work, um, to figure out what kind of puppy you're going to get. And I think the thing that makes the difference is that you need a really experienced evaluator who knows canine body language and can read the puppies. I think the more, the, the more inexperienced somebody is with that sort of thing, the, they're not going to get the best read. So I, I feel like the, having a good evaluator is like we're pretty much winning the war as far as it goes. And I'm not the best, like I'm, I'm still learning. There's still times when I feel like I don't read right, but I'm getting better and better. Because really the trick is to look at what the puppy is, just what the puppy is doing and look at it without judgment. Then interpret. There we go. So we've got a nice dark base. And that really makes Kitty stand out, right? It's because by painting it dark, we're essentially pulling the eye away from it. And then when we bring out these flagstones with more shading and highlighting, then you know everything will start to come up, but it'll still be darker because we started darker, just like starting with black primer or a dark gray primer. Um, that'll make this a little de-emphasized so that Kid A is really what you're gonna look at. Huh. Not always true, Queen of Kings. Um, for example, Kiri, who was my heart dog, um, she bonded with me and not my husband at the time. Um, and then 
Our first dog, Leo, also Shiloh Shepherd, he bonded with Zach. So that was two boys, and that was boy, boy, and girl, girl. So I think it really does depend. I think it really does depend. Um, it also depends on who spends a lot of time with the puppy in the beginning. I find like, um, and who works most with the puppy. So yeah. Oh, it, carbon gray um, does read slightly cold. Uh, the reason that it does is that we're using lamp black pigment here. And when you are using lamp black pigment, it does tend to go slightly bluish. Uh, so it's really not, it's really gray. And it's looking a lot bluer on camera. Like you can see the color in the bottle is much more like this. The reason that it's shifting more blue, by the way, is that we have orange right next to it. Remember how complementary colors work? The presence of a complementary color will bring out and make more intense its opposite. So the very slight blue hue of the gray is being emphasized and brought out because we've got the orange right next to it. So that means that the, the paint is looking more cold than it actually is. Um, she traveled, uh, after, the first day was rough, Roger, and the second day was carsick. So then we finally, um, we finally managed to even out on the third and fourth days. But she's, um, I mean, doing this trip is probably going to mean she's a great, she's a great car dog. When we, uh, we went to return the rental car yesterday, I put her in the crate in David's car, so that, cause he was going to pick me up and take me back. And pretty much the car now for her is she gets into the car in her crate and she just falls asleep. <laughs> So yeah, she's going to be a good travel dog, I think. But yeah, then we had, um, we also had kind of the opposite though, Queen of Kings. We did have, so one boy dog liked my ex-husband and the girl dog liked me. But then the next two, the boy dog liked me and the girl dog liked him. Well, she was actually kind of both of our dog because I showed her a lot. I took her to dog shows, so we road tripped. But uh, she really loved my my ex too, so... So yeah, I think it, I, I don't know, in my experience for, with our four Shilohs, it totally depended on, depended on who spent the most time with the dog and also just depended on, it was just luck of the draw probably. All right, let's get some green. I think I want some lighter green to kind of, in, in, uh, kind of imply lichen and uh, growth. So I want some green bloom and then I also want a darker green that's going to give me kind of a shadow yeah, that she would be a dingo for like two hours when we got out of the car, um, Scrying Eye. Like after, you know, hours. Like our first day, our first day was like 11 hours. And then every day got a little bit less. So like the first day was just bad. And the next, the next day was nine hours. And the day after that was seven hours. And then I just did a little five hour hop uh, to get home yesterday. So, but yeah, after she sleeps for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, she's going to be like pretty much a tornado. So we get to the hotel room and I'd give her like two hours to play with her for two hours just to wind her down. All right, so let's find a good dark green for this. What do I got? What do I got? I got the old, what I used to use in the old days is swamp green, which I think that probably the closest thing right now would be maybe troll hide. Uh, troll hide is noticeably lighter than swamp green. So maybe troll hide plus a little bit of brown liner would give us uh, the equivalent of swamp green. I don't want to use anything that's too blue. I think I'm going to maybe go with these colors. Uh, Grave Bloom is pretty light. Hey there, Zachariah. How's it going? All right. So I'm going to essentially use a little bit of a brown liner or Rogue Shadow works too. Rogue Shadow is going to neutralize this green a little bit more and make it more neutral. The reason is that Rogue Shadow has red in it. So when you mix two complements together, you lose the intensity of color. Hello, red things. Everybody's piling in. So yeah, we don't have a puppy cam today because um, I got my powered USB hub, but I didn't have time to test it before I left. And then, like I said, we got in yesterday and I was just, both me and the puppy were exhausted. We were both like wound up, but still super tired. So I didn't get time to set up the, um, oh good, new paints in a mixer, grats. Um, I didn't have time to set up puppy cam and it wasn't working this morning. So I had to unplug and replug everything. So we will get the puppy cam figured out. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it. And it may be that I need to swap my cameras over to the main USBs and run my um, run my speaker, maybe, through the hub. I'm not sure. 
The problem is I've got a ton of cameras, right? So it's like, it's hard. Because I have to swap out whatever... Uh, and I still need to get it to work with her puppy cam. So I'm not, yeah, I'm just not sure how, I, how that's all turning, how all that is all working or not working. We'll have to figure it out. Either that or um, I'll have to sacrifice <laughs> my webcam or something. I don't know. I don't know what I, I, unfortunately I need like everything that's plugged in and I've only got three USBs on that. I was really hoping the powered hub would work. All right, so let's take our troll hide and put a drop of uh, the rogue shadow into it and see how it darkens it up. My lights are pretty strong today. I'm gonna move them a little bit so that I can get the color around here. Ooh, yeah, now it's dark. So it's very dark green. And it's continually being dark green. Yeah. Sometimes the black base will help. Maybe two black bases. There we go. Ha ha. Yeah, it was just too much white. My, my palette was absolutely overexposing the paint. Uh, so that's what it really looks like. And let's see if we mix that in. Let's see how dark that makes it go. And I'm going to thin this quite a bit. One to one, actually, because I want to use it to uh, as a shader. So I want it to be a blend in a little bit. And since the base is so dark, it'll blend in probably just great. Um, I also want, yeah, I'll probably keep using my Skoda because it's kind of an expendable brush and I'll stipple with it. Um, I also want some Rogue Shadows just to line between the flagstones. Yeah, I mean, I've got, um, I've got my Logitech webcams, but when I attached them to the powered USB hub and turned everything on this morning and tried to get it to work, you, um, OBS was not reading was not reading the USB hub. So maybe I need to install a driver. It's supposed to be plug and play, right? But you just never know. So let's move over and get our liner. But there might be something I need to figure out. Yep, yeah, so, I mean, this is my older laptop. It's a gaming laptop, but it is older. So maybe it's just not savvy in the ways of uh, USB hubs. I have no idea. But yeah, we'll just have to try to figure something out. If I was trying to plug that in and plug both my face cam and the new puppy cam into that. And maybe if I try to do it with my, my mic, it'll be better, but... Not sure. We're gonna mix this up. It's a really rich green, which is good. I want to pretty much use it to just kind of hint at some wet, you know, plant growth. So let's put in our shading and then we'll start working in our highlighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully I can get mine going. I was I was sad this morning. Let's see if this is dark enough. So also um, using the liner will also let this. Uh, you can see those coming out. I shall switch to a thinner brush for the lining. Um, but it also if like any of my green stuff is still showing through in those cracks, which sometimes happens, it'll let me um, use the liner to hide it. So Rogue Shadow is a liner paint, even though it does not say that it is. It says so on the back of its Fast Palette box. And it is only available in Fast Palette. It's um, it's a very reddish, reddish brown liner. So it is a good shader for red. However, it has more coverage intrinsically than brown liner. So it can be a little bold. So you can see that even though with this dark gray, you can still see the lines. Carbon gray is nice because it's like dark enough, but it's not so, it's, it's still light enough that you can shade it. And this carbon gray color that we started with is actually, its purpose was actually to do a very fast black. So if you, 
if you paint something carbon gray and then you do a black wash over the top, it will look like shaded black. Um, and that's like the super fast black. Then maybe you do a little edge highlight here and there and you're done. So yeah, that was the purpose of carbon gray. We did not have a nice charcoal gray before. Stormy gray is notably lighter. And that was our darkest gray before. So I like to start with a really dark gray like this on flagstones, um, dungeons specifically. Oh, some little puppy squirming down there. Like I said, if she wakes up, I'll have to take her out real quick. We'll take a short break. David was great because he took time uh, off for yesterday and today. He had a lot of time off he needed to use anyway. So he's helping. He's able to be here for the puppy's first uh, first days um, and help get her kind of established in a routine. And then, of course, when he goes back to work next week, then he's going to go to ReaperCon. Like, he's going to disappear for several days. She's going to go bazonkers when he comes home. Yeah, it would work real good on a dragon. Like, it, you just pretty much airbrush the charcoal gray or the carbon gray over everything. And it's 9318. So it's not a fast palette color. It is orderable. It's a Kickstarter color from the long from two Kickstarters ago, I think. Um, but yeah, then just get like a bottle of black wash and just go to town. Your uh, a, a bottle of black wash from you, whatever whoever you want to uh, get it from. Speaking of which, I need to bug the uh, powers that be at Reaper about getting the new product. I do like lining the stones rather than um, bringing in a wash here. Because then I'm planning to highlight these pretty uh, substantially. And so I would just essentially be causing more work for myself with a wash. Now remember the back, we just kind of let everything kind of fade so I'll just kind of make a couple of little stone marks and then I'm going to just paint the back really dark. So we're kind of saying, hey, don't look here. This is where the base kind of fades off into the background. Oh, yikes, Corsair, not good. Glad you're okay. That's not fun. You can cuss. The only concussion I ever got was caused by one of my dogs, by the way. It's the perils of owning big dogs. Oh, you get to go, Zachary. That's awesome. Good, good, yeah. I will not be there. David will be holding down the fort for me. I need to um, you get these minis done. That's why we have to finish Kidda's base today, because Kidda needs to go to ReaperCon to go to Ron. Some stuff I may not um, send because I haven't finished base work on it. Like Noel Pirate doesn't have a bigger base and everything. And Ron tends to like them put on plastic bases. So he'll get some. He'll get Madame Delia. He'll get Kidda. Um, he'll probably get, if we can finish her, yeah, I don't know. He might get the Star Mage, the Celestial Mage. But the problem is I'm not done with uh, the basing on so many of these. And I'm, uh, be, having taken so many days off to travel to the puppy for the puppy stuff, I really need to get on my Patreon stuff. So I might not have a lot of extra time to finish basing on all of these models. So if your green stuff didn't quite connect, like I didn't quite connect those two lines, you can just put the liner down. Nobody will ever notice, especially once you shade and highlight around it. And you can be messy with your liner because we're going to come back and clean up these edges and highlight these stones. And I do want to put a darker shadow underneath Kitty. So I'm going to just block that in with the rogue shadow. It's kind of uh, create so that Kitty is casting a shadow. And I've still got my carbon gray, so I can even wet blend in the edges there. 
Ah, yes, Painting Big that I have a Patreon. You should go and check it out. We have some free stuff up there, um, including a handout. If you have not checked out my Thinning MSP Paints class, I'm not at ReaperCon this year, but I did teach a class for the Virtual Con in 2020 that is still up online. Um, called Thinning MSP Paints. You can go find that class and then you can go to my Patreon and get the handout for as a free download. It's a public post. Thanks, Scrying Eye. Yeah, actually, I need to make a post today, um, Patreon post about the puppy with a picture. Probably the picture from this morning. So I can announce to the whole Patreon that, yes, my, my life has been disrupted, but I'm going to do my best to get my content out. But with David here to help wrangle, like, I should be able to get it. That and she seems to, like, she's been taught so far just by the car ride that when she goes in a crate or she goes into a confined space, she has to settle and sleep, right? Because we do the same thing at night with her. She's got a crate to sleep in and then some uh, a front yard with potty pads. That way I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and take her out. Brilliant! And then as time goes on, you essentially shrink the front yard as she gets to the age where she can control her bladder and then she's fully crate trained for the evening. We are, um, we are giving her a lot more freedom than I usually have given my puppies in the past. Uh, many of my dogs have spent a lot of time in crates as babies just because if there was no one to watch them, um, you know, they, you gotta keep them safe because she will get into the power cords. She thinks power cords are pretty interesting right now. Um, but yeah, this one, because I have David and because David's actually really proactively involved with the puppies and with helping me watch, um, we've been able to give her a lot of freedom. One or the other of us has been able to always watch her, so. So we'll see how this works for house housebreaking because uh, I'm very much used to crate training and she will be crate trained, but not nearly as, she'll get a lot more freedom than my past dogs. So we'll see how it works. All right, so we've got all our lining down. You can see how that brings out the pattern. Now we're gonna take our green, this color, and I'm gonna move this out of the way so that we can see the model again. And I'm gonna start putting some of these, the dark green. I'm gonna also paint, uh, mix up some of my Grave Gloom, which is a fast palette color, Gloom and Grave. One of the best fast palettes I think we, we do, actually. It has a lot of beautiful colors in it. And I do like this for like, kind of sickly lichen. If you wanted a bit more gray, like heather, like if you're doing like Scotland, you know, like that, then you've got kind of that gray, green, heather and lichen color. That is um, pale lichen, which is 9084 in the MSP line. Uh, this one's a little bit more, more kind of, you know, green slimy color, I guess, which I think kind of like it for dungeon mold, actually, for that reason. Puppy, what are you doing? She's like, I'm gonna put myself under this pillow. Under the pillow. Plop. She's such a dork. She is such a dork right now, trust me. She has actually, hold on. I do have the ability, I have the technology. She has decided to put herself underneath the pillow, underneath the dog bed. <laughs> She's decided this is her happy place. What a silly pupper. She's ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I like this um, Grave Gloom for a very kind of more of an evil, evil green, I guess. It's a really good evil green, if that's a thing. And another great thing you can do with it is mix another green. Like if you if you mix a darker green into it, you can get some really beautiful natural greens with this for foliage and stuff. So I mixed it up. I'm gonna put a little bit, I put a little bit of water in it. So we're gonna use the green. And I kind of want to create some green spillage like coming down here and pooling, pooling down here and then maybe running, running through it or over the tiles. So what I want is to suggest some water kind of leaking down the front and running this way. Um, I made a really, don't, don't make it too much of a straight line when you do this kind of thing. You want to um, 
kind of just show like and I want I want this to be like some green um, kind of just goop algae almost um, cave algae kind of building up here so and then I can put some gloss that's really strong So this is too big of a brush, but I'm just going to get that in there. So I'm going to move to a smaller brush in a second, but I am going to get some, some bigger. But you can kind of see how that gives you kind of a plant growth effect. I always think that dungeons should be full of slimy subterranean algae and molds when they're wet. And I can bring in my olive green again to kind of fuzz some of that in, paint over it. I'm going to make it go to the back of the base as well to make it kind of coming like down the corridor from behind Kitty. And uh, I would use a gloss sealer or water effects with the Scenix water effects gel to to like make this stay wet, give it a wet look. So I do a mix of my troll hide and a little bit of this green and. Uh, Bring in a little bit more, and I can kind of put some kind of some patches too of other green if I want to bring out colors. I think I am going to actually bring up um, the storm chaser a little bit, or sorry, storm chaser. <laughs> I was reading chat. Chat. I'm going to bring up the carbon gray a little bit to make a highlight for it. Um, the other color I would use uh, in this it would be to add some brown to it as well. So I'm going to grab a, let's see here. I want a lighter color. I think I want bleached linen or, oh no, I'm gonna use Cairn Stone. So Cairn Stone is good. It'll kind of, this yellowish color will kind of neutralize the, the bluish um, ness of the carbon. And then I think I want what kind of brown. I think I want to actually use a little bit of nut brown for my brown. Just because, you know, dungeon, sure there are stones, but there's also dirt. You're, you're buried underground. Yeah, Puppy might be really good, actually, for on stream. If she keeps this up. Uh-oh. <laughs> she is like burrowing under the blanket. <laughs> Super funny. Super funny. She's so funny. Oh no, out of coffee. All right, so here we've got, um, and I'm trying to vary up. Like I chose the nut brown because it's kind of purplish red. So we've got kind of complementary colors, right? If we've got a kind of a purple red and we've got a green, that's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit complementary. So I'm gonna grab my mixing brush and I wanna take some carbon gray and mix up a lighter gray. I'm going to use Cairn Stone mixed into that. It's a good lighter stone color that has white in it, so you can bring up stone with it. Need to add a little bit of white also to keep my other colors good. Or, sorry, water. <coughs> I'm a little short sleep tonight. Things should be much better by Monday. We should be in a routine with the pupster. So for highlighting stones, you can try to do like kind of a blended effect or you can edge highlight um, or you can, uh, if you edge highlight, you really kind of need to want to choose kind of a light direction. Like if the light's coming from the front, then you want to highlight mostly the front edges of the stone. But you also, um, I'm, I might stipple a little bit. Stippling is going to give you a suggestion that the stones are a rough texture, kind of sandpapery. 
And that brown is directly based on a color of ink from Winsor Newton that I used to use all the time, although it is lighter than the ink. Lighter in color. I just want to get some browns stippled onto these rocks. One of the best things you can do for stones is to introduce lots of different colors, because if you ever take a look at stone around you, it does tend to have, um, even if the stone itself is pretty uniform, you'll see like dirt stains like creeping up parts of it from the ground it's sitting on. You'll see, you know, like greenery or lichen or stuff like that growing. Um, it was the, um, it was a, a Windsor and Newton ink. I don't know if it was fountain pen ink or just regular ink. It was artist ink. But it was a dark purple brown. I really liked it, so I kind of, but I wanted a little bit lighter, so it was more useful. So yeah, so I'm going to grab some of this brown. I'm mostly going to hit it down here near the bottom of the base. You guys can see my colors, so now I can move this back. So you can kind of see where I'm stippling it on there. So I'm going to also stipple it around the greens here. And I don't want it to just sit in that crack. I want to kind of carry it around. Adding different colors to stonework is what makes stonework look natural. Oh, for fountain pen, yeah. I think this is more like, it was just generic artist ink. It was, uh, it was available ages ago. I don't know. I assume they still make it, but I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they've gone to traditional um, acrylic ink. I have some Noodler's Blue Black. I like it. That's what's in my fountain pen right now. Um, in Private Reserve, I've got their Tanzanite. That's a good color. There's one I have that's oxblood. That I, I just love the color of oxblood, the dark red. But I tend to switch around a lot. I have a lot. Um, I like Pilot's um, Japanese series. So I have a bunch of those. They make some really beautiful blues. It's just like stippling. And you see now, as I bring in the brown, the base is going to start looking a lot less blue. Because I'm just, and you can't even really see the brown. Like you have to, you have to get close to kind of see it. You can see it there. Because it's the same kind of shade as the carbon gray. It's not lighter. It's not darker. So when you stipple it in, it really blends in. And it just makes a, a nice uh, finish on the stones. It suggests more, more than just like a flat gray. It's so important to vary the colors in your groundwork. Even for just boring old, boring old dungeon stone. Boring old dungeon stone doesn't have to be boring. So I'm mostly putting this around cracks, but I'm also just sometimes putting it up on the stones. Just a little stipple here and there. And I am putting it down at the bottom of the edge here. So we've got our kind of our greenery growing here. Now, if you were doing this as an outdoor base and, uh, or even an indoor base, so if you had some really fine flocking, like the flock that's really like really fine ground, like styrofoam, you could do, use a really thin bead of blue to kind of bring some texture up in this. But be careful because if it's big flocking, it's just gonna be way out of scale of the model. So you wanna use the finest flock you can. <laughs> Thanks, Ify. Yeah, she's being kind of a doofus right now. She's like burrowed under the, the dog bed that I put there. The dog bed smells like Kiri, though, so I bet she likes it. So I dug out all the, all the old dog beds that I, that I had saved from Kiri. I didn't save a lot of things from Kiri, but I saved her. Her beds were pretty new, actually. I bought all of them when we were out here, when I was already out here. So I washed them and I hung them outside for several days just to air them out and she's got three different dog beds we're trying to figure out if we have enough puppy enclosure material because I've got enough of these gates to build another two, another two by two but when I have to expand this when she gets bigger uh, then that won't work so well. I'll have to I'll have to steal those panels. So we'll see. We're holding off buying another X Pen, even though they're very handy. But we've heard, I've already got so much dog stuff, guys. Like I've got a lot of gates. I've got a car barrier for the element. 
I've got like I've got Kiri's big crate that, um, and I do want to get another big crate, another forty-eight inch, um, but a soft one for travel. So that'll be one of the things we buy that I'm holding off for now. All right. So let's say, just judging from the overhead light, we'll just say that it's coming pretty straight down, kind of frontal. And we'll highlight the top edges and the top sections of these uh, stones with the gray. So remember, I mixed up some Cairn stone. And I'll see if this, I'm going to test down a couple of stones, see if it's light enough to really show up. But yeah, yeah, hopefully we'll get the puppy cam figured out. I'll try to do that over this weekend. I'm not sure why um, it's not working with the powered hub right now. So also, if you have any little cracks or bits, like you can use the, um, the lighter color to bring those out. So you can see where I'm stippling that in now. And this is where I really like starting with a dark color on stonework. Like I really like being able to kind of just bring up the details and, and work with a bunch of different colors on it. Can suggest some, some cracks there. Make that neat up there so you can you can suggest a crack. I definitely will highlight the edges of the stones as if they've scuff, been scuffed on the step down here. And <laughs> she's put herself behind the pillow now. It's ridiculous. She's being good though. If she can hold out another uh, another 25 minutes, that'll be pretty good. I don't know. She's kind of restless, so we'll see. I might have to rush a puppy out. <laughs> the dork. Such a silly pupper. Puppers just make you laugh. So yeah, the next order of business is to give her a bath this weekend. Cut her little toenails because she desperately needs it. Um, and uh, need to find a puppy class so she can socialize with other dogs that are not her litter mates. Now is the time to do that. Um, you've got a very limited socialization window on young puppies where their brains are very open and accepting of new things. And essentially, this is where the concept of socialization comes from. But if you can introduce them in a positive way to things during that time, they'll kind of integrate that with maybe only one or two exposures. Whereas if you wait and it goes past that 12 week mark, you have to work a lot harder to acclimate a dog to something that might scare them. If he, I think we're gonna keep Kiki and she'll be Keyleth, um, but she'll officially be Kiki. She knows her name already she comes to it. She's really good about that. So, and she is kind of a kiki. She's kind of a ditz. <laughs> she's, she's kind of a funny little, funny little happy ditz like that. So kiki suits her very much. Like she's very smart, but she has no attention span. Pullman railroad cars. I, you, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure what color that is. I'm, I'm not a railroad aficionado. I, I know the Pullman brand, but I can't like imagine in my head. Was it a red brown? Like describe the color to me. Cause I've seen plenty of trains in the course of my existence. I just don't remember. But yeah, so Kiki's kind of suits her, and I, I discussed it with David last night, and we discussed it again this morning, but he likes the name Kiki. And we both like Critical Role. We, we both are enjoying the cartoon. So um, we are pretty cool having our dog named Keyleth or Kiki. And our breeder... Uh, will be thrilled because of course she's a huge Critical Role fan and, and she's the one who named Keyleth in the first place, so. Kiki's 
good just because, um, oh, a deep olive. I mean, if you're good, is it really, really rich? Because, I mean, the best olive green we've got right now probably is this one. Unless if military green is still in circulation, it'll be a little more muted than troll hide. Uh, muddy olive is also a slightly lighter variant. I think what's happening is that as she lies on the floor, she gets a little warm and the warm the floor because it's wood floor it warms up under her so she cr keeps crawling around her enclosure to get to a new section of cold floor <laughs> i ordered her a cooling mat and it should actually be here today so it's like a gel filled mat that um cools uh itself keeps itself a little colder than the surroundings but we definitely need to trim her nails before she gets on it So just a little bit of texture here where we're heading back into our um, our neutral area where we're just painting it dark because it's on the, on the back. And I, I can also take my original carbon gray and stipple a little bit into that area now, blend it in a little bit better with the texture that I was working with. So it just kind of blends in and fades out. Got a little bit of uh, detail here that I can highlight, but then we're done. Kiki's also good because it's um, it's a hard consonant. Dogs tend to like hard consonant noises. So Kiki is actually, and, and the E sound is a happy high pitched sound. So she really likes it. It sounds like the puppy call, right? It sounds like the puppy, puppy, puppy um, kind of call that the breeder tended to use with them. So it's really easy to teach her to come to her name. Like she already knows when I call her name, she comes. And at eight weeks, that's pretty good. So I mean, just reinforcing that. So she keeps doing it. So yeah, I've got clicker training to do with her later today. She got her first evening um, sitting with us watching TV last night. She was sitting with David while I did my evening stretches so that she wouldn't be bouncing along on me while I was on the ground. They're only this cute for a short period of time. So. I think she'll be a pretty dog when she grows up. So getting those stones. Oh, there you go. So um, if you can look up Pullman and Pantone, you might be able to find a Pantone swatch that will give you um, a really close to, you know, like this is it. And then you can kind of compare the olives. The only olives in the Reaper line really are going to be troll hide, like muddy olive and like the military green olive drab, I think is mostly canceled. Am I correct? And it's very Brown. I don't know that that would be a match. Um, but those are the olives because olives don't sell like super great. Oh, and they're IEMF olive. I don't know if that one's still around, but I think it's lighter. So, uh, so there are very few olives actually in the line. There may be some in the newer, in the newer releases that I'm not aware of. Yeah, so far she's a pretty good puppy. She, she wakes up at night just to check that I'm there, but I think as she gets used to this new house, she'll stop doing that so much. want to get a little bit of stippling on the edges of the stones back here and if I feel like I've lost the lines between my stones then I'll go back in definitely going to stipple with my lighter gray and I got to bring some green and some brown back here too yeah exactly Yeah, you could ask, um, I don't know who else has my encyclopedia to combine of, uh, as far as the colors go, but like I said, very few olive greens really in the line. 
Because I love olive greens, but a lot of people, I mean, that's why Swamp Green got canceled, is because olive greens just aren't very popular compared to other colors. I'm just going to touch up my lines there just to make sure my stones stand out. Then I get a little bit of water on my brush and make sure I've got that kind of shadow stippled in behind Kitty and around Kitty's paws. So bringing in that dark shadow and then I can always grab my gray and kind of stipple that into the shadow as well. I'm going to blend them in. There we go. we have got a shadow there. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Thanks for the tip, Nomad Zeke. Yeah, the Pantone should give you a, at least like an idea of what you're looking for. That's the, that's the important thing. Hold on, got to get my... Uh, I'm mixing a new highlight color, so I'm going to add more Cairn Stone into that carbon gray mix that already had a bit of the Cairn Stone in it. I think today's going to be a bit of an easier day. I'll work on Patreon stuff and figure out, plan my plan my week next week but I'm still pretty exhausted <laughs> and the puppy woke me up last night because it's a whole new thing right it's a whole new bedtime it's a whole new bed arrangement you know she'll get better and better as the days go on but the first night is always rough oh that's gonna be hard yeah small touch-ups is hard yeah, the TARDIS had, had its own color, and the Reaper TARDIS was painted that color, actually. We mixed it. <laughs> Kitty! Kitty's got such a nice sword. I'm very happy with how Kitty's sword turned out with the purple on the tip. It's really neat. Looks good. All right, so let's bring in some brown and green back here, and then we're going to keep up. Oh, it is fa it, there is a fan on, on Kiki. Yeah. I've got it on the lowest setting. Yeah, I've got a fan running for the puppy. Yeah, because otherwise it's going to be too warm in here for her. She's used to AC. She's not used to our hardcore California lifestyle where we don't have any AC in this house. And it's supposed to get up over 80 today, too. So, got to close up the house after the stream so that we don't get too warm. Alright, just going to put a little bit of um, lighter color on the edges here. And I am going to bring in more brown and a little more green as well. But here's where getting uh, kind of that stipple texture is uh, really useful in trying to make it finer. But you can see how natural the stones kind of look from the top. And that's, uh, yeah, this is about a foot. It's just one of those black ones that just the small, fat, round ones that sits on the floor. We've got big box fans everywhere, but I like how um, portable this little guy is. It's about an 11 inch, 11 inch fan. And it, yeah, I think it's a, is it a Ryobi? If it's not, it's like close. Yeah, it's the Amazon Basics version of the Ryobi. All right, I'm actually going to grab some brown and uh, bring in some different colors here, kind of to break up these dark shadows here, bring in the brown. We've got a little green there, maybe I'll paint that entire rock brown. But yeah, I mean, our house is, is great, like, I really love the radiant heat flooring. Um, and really, the only challenge is when it gets really hot in the summer, but even so, like, when it was 95, the inside of our house was still 80, which is hot, but when you've got fans going, it's bearable. Um, so our foam roofing does actually a pretty good job of keeping our house from getting really unbearably hot, even in really hot days. I just had to make sure to close all the, the house up in the morning because we open it all up at night. There we go. So that's a nice stone texture. Yeah, sorry if the fan is a little bit, um, you know, much. I can try to, I can't really, 
baffle it. Sadly, it's good. It's right kind of behind me, so I can try to extend its cord and put it on the far side of the room. That might help a little bit. It's just this adapt adaptation period, guys, where we're adapting to the puppy. I'm just going to kind of blend this uh, stonework in just a little bit more here by stippling with a little bit of liner. Oh, that was ages ago, Scrying Eye. Oh, yeah. Actually, I guess not ages ago. The move into the new house was only in August or September last year. So we've it's been almost a full year now. Um, yeah, we had I had it pretty much. I didn't have much stuff. So we had it the way we wanted it pretty early on. Now we just had to reset everything for the new pupster. So now it's getting reset because the baby, the baby puppy, the baby. She's such a baby, too. No brain cells. All play. But yeah, so the puppy has disrupted things a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more green here and there. Kind of like it's coming out from between the cracks here. Let's just add a little bit of extra texture and color that's different from the gray. And I want to add a little bit more down here. And a little bit more over here. There you go. Just little touches of green to make it look more wet. Yes, it's been that long. Time flies. It's all good. Alright, I'm going to use this um, gray bloom a little bit more to bring in a little bit more stipples. And I'm going to put a gloss coat over the top of it. I want to make sure I get plenty of dark green around it too, though. So I can use my really fine brush to really kind of emphasize the vegetation, the stipples. And I use usually the side of my, the tip of my brush because I don't want to destroy the brush tip. I'm just going to use some real fine stipples to kind of break up some of this area. The finer of a dot you can get with your stippling, the more natural it's going to look at the scale. Because uh, obviously Kitty is little, so. But yeah, totally a bit of a disruption now with the little pupper because we've had to puppy proof and move everything that was on a lower level up. So now we need new ways to hang our dish towels and stuff because before they were down low. Um, either that or we're just going to kind of work with it until she gets a little less uh, mouthy. A little less inclined to just pull things, play with everything she sees. Like she's definitely at the age where everything is a toy. Hey Crowley, thanks. 33 months. Almost to 36, almost to the triple subversary. The puppy has not yet heard me sing, so I'm kind of happy we didn't have a subversary today because it would have woken her up and I would have had to stop the stream to take her out. We'll put a little bit of green up there. I think that's looking pretty nice, actually. Let's back up a little bit. Let's get a little closer. Went a little bit too far. Yeah, I like that. That feels organic. Organic dungeon. I'll keep working on it. I feel like I need actually a bit lighter, maybe. Although I'm trying to not get too light on it, because I do want it to be kind of a dingy, dark dungeon base. <laughs> Bye, Crowley. We have Friday. I need to send Dave. This reminds me, because, you know, Reaper Dave has to get a picture of my new pupper. Getting some lighter edges here to bring these out around the edges. You don't have to do a lot on these. 
But I do want things to look really dinged up. I mean, come on. There have been oozes oozing down these corridors. Rust monsters flailing about. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Varl. So we brought our puppy home, Varl, but uh, she's sleeping right now. So And my puppy cam didn't work. So I need to work on getting the puppy cam to work this uh, this weekend. Alrighty. <laughs> yes, I'm meow it in. Yeah, I'm amazing. Ah, so I'm just trying to get, um, you can see everything's coming more into relief now. You can also take like your liner and kind of darken down some stones, for example. Like if you wanted to have the front here be a little darker, I could actually make a glaze with my liner color and uh, paint it over the area. I don't want to get all my greens, but I'm going to do a rough glaze and kind of see how that makes it look like the light is coming from the top now because we've shaded the front there. So that's kind of nice. So you can do that. You can absolutely glaze with your liner color. I mean, they're so good at it, right? So I just painted that liner on there and look at how it looks like it's three-dimensional now. So this is cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So let's see. Let us do the gloss sealer. So you can use the Reaper gloss sealer. If you use the Reaper gloss, then I would put on several layers. Um, I would put on one, let it dry, put on the next. Um, if you want something that's maybe a little thicker and goopier, um, I use Microscale. Um, you can also, if you want it really goopy and you just want to kind of sculpt it, you could use um, water effects from uh, Woodland Scenics. Let me see, where's a brush I can use that's not too, that's kind of expendable. I'll use my old Da Vinci. But the micro scale is just thicker. Um, it's a little goopier. So I'm going to kind of take it back here and kind of paint it over the green part. And this is just to suggest moisture pooling back here in the dungeon. And I've got some like recessed stones here, so I can put um, some back there too. Now, technically this is like kind of flying in the face of what I usually teach because we did NMM and now we're putting kind of a water effect. But I think the water effect is gonna be um, pretty understated and so I've chosen to do it anyway. Technically the fact that the water effect is real shiny would uh, undermine the effect of the NMM but I'm gambling on everybody looking at the kitty and then only then noticing later on the water effect. But yeah, technically when you do stuff like this where you're adding a real gloss element, um, when you're trying to do a fake gloss element with the NMM, it doesn't work very well. Uh, but I'm keeping this real low key, so hopefully it will be okay. Just because I wanted to suggest a little bit now the shine is going to, yeah, see now, now you can see the white water, see? And uh, you want it definitely across the front of the face of the stair here. So you want just a little thread of it. Now Reaper is really good for doing kind of thin threads like this. This is a little goopy for it, it's a little harder. But the Reaper stuff um, is thinner and easier to paint on. So you can do like real thin beads of the Reaper sealer. couple of lines there so you see so it looks like water pooling and that's what I wanted to suggest that this is a very wet dungeon um, and looking at it straight on it's still the greens are still there everything's still there it's good yes if you're using gloss using it with metallics is a better um, solution it's the same thing we ran into with doing that, um, the golem, the Greek Odyssey golem, where we uh, tried to do the heat effect, but then we were using real metallics, and so the heat effect ended up not looking like a heat effect, because it, it's like trying to convince somebody that there's an illusion here, but then you show them the real thing right next to it, and there's no way they're going to believe in the illusion, because they see the real, th the, the, the real thing. So that's the problem. It's less, uh, less of a problem on the back, though, because there's less NMM showing here. But yeah, I decided I wanted it anyway, so 
It's just a little bit of understated gloss. It'll only show up from certain angles. But now Kid A has a dungeon base. But yeah, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you're using metallics or gloss, then you need to not do NMM or fake lighting effects on the model. Um, the only, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it here and, mm, but I'm keeping it real small. So, okay. Oh, and I think maybe, no, no, she's still asleep. Okay, good. So yeah, so now we have determined that the tiny puppy can indeed sleep through an entire stream. And we finished a kitty. I think this is about all I do. I maybe would come and bring up the edges of the stones a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more. I don't know, Scrying Eye. I've got a lot of Patreon stuff to catch up on. Maybe, maybe. Um, puppy might be okay with it. Uh, so I'll, I'll see. Check on it. Uh, check on me around like 3.30 USA Central Time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I brought, and I have my puppy on International Dog Day. So yeah, so we'll see. Because we have a lot to do with Kiki too tomorrow. Tomorrow I really, we really need to give her a bath. We need to trim her paws. You know, we need to, we need to do a lot of stuff with her. Um, so tomorrow I might not stream, but we'll see. I might also feel like streaming after such a long break from it. See, so yeah, I maybe just bring up the edges here just a little bit more. I could bring up the stonework edges um, a lot more and still keep kind of a dark look to them. We did start a little late, so I'll just highlight these just a tad more. And I'm mostly trying to stipple a bit to make it rough. So essentially, the more you edge highlight the stones, the more um, stark the uh, cracks between the rocks will start to look. Um, but the tighter you make this, the more distracting it will be. So you do want to kind of halt it at a certain point where you want all the attention to mostly be beyond the kitty. I also have to um, shoot my um, fundamentals video for this month because I'm totally behind on that. The puppy disruption, it is real. Pop eruption. All right. Just a little bit extra though. This kid is out to smite evil. Smite evil and take its catnip. There we go. So putting um, an edge, a lighter edge right on the, uh, up against the base helps to make the stones really stand out from the shiny black base. Like so. Yeah, I think that's good. So that's fun. <laughs> Technically, a foxes are roll finds, not canines. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Boy, I'm tired. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell. Puppy sleep deprivation. But it's time to take the little one out. So I hope you all have a lovely day. Um, thanks for hanging out. I will be here uh, every day next week. I think that um, Justin wants me to open ReaperCon with a stream. So hold on while I check the time on that. I need to look at his text. So, Justin... I sent him a picture of, of my baby puppy and he sent me a picture of his baby and said maybe he was thinking he would rather have a puppy. <laughs> Thursday morning at 10 a.m. CST, so that's going to be 8 a.m. my time, but lately the puppy's been getting me up so early. Um, so that'll be a challenge, but we'll try it. We'll try it. All right, so yeah, um, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday morning I'll be on. At least, uh, that's, that's fair warning for you too, Quindy. I don't know if Justin told you he was going to ask me that. <laughs> but yes. All right.
have a good one, everybody, and uh, more Kiki next time, and hopefully I can get that cam working, although she's pretty boring right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, they want me to do an hour and a half stream. I'll just message you, Quindy. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, and I hope you have a lovely weekend, and uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, um, then I will see you Monday. Alrighty? Bye-bye.